Then there are quizzes and tests. You can access those two ways. You can go directly to the test and quizzes link here, or you can, there will be links all through the lessons to the quizzes and the exams. And notice each of the quizzes and the exams has a password. Um, they have a due date. If you try to access it after the due date, it would not be available. It will only be available after you have gone through your lessons. In each of the quizzes and exams, I'm really trying to test your ability to understand the material. So quizzes and exams are timed. Um, quizzes, 25 minutes for each quiz for 25 questions. They are all multiple choice. And the exams, there are two hours. The exams contain 80 questions, multiple choice and true false, and either one or two essay questions. I don't force my students to go and take an exam on campus, but I make my exams timed because I really am trying to assess whether or not you really do understand the material. You don't get a second chance to take quizzes or exams. You take it, you have to take it in one sitting, and you can't pause it and come back to it. Or if you do, you still only have that two hours for the exam or the 25 minutes for the quiz to take it. Now let's talk about essay questions. Again, there will be one or two on each exam. Please make sure that you distinguish between a short answer and an essay. An essay is a well thought out, multi-paragraph, fully explained answer. A short answer is one or two or three sentences and uh, would not get you full credit by any stretch of the imagination. And essay questions, whether there's one or two, are going to be 20% of the exam grade. So on an essay question, these are three things that you should never do. Number one, you should never go to a website and type in uh, a question like what are the Articles of Confederation, get an answer, and then cut and paste that answer from, from the, that website. I'm not looking for your ability to go and find something on Google. And if I do discover that you've done that, I'll give you a zero on the essay answer. And eventually, if you are a multiple time ex offender, then I'll give you a zero on your exam. So we just don't do that. The next thing that you would not want to do is give me a lot of opinion that is not backed up by information and examples. Um, it's really great to hear your opinion. The best place for me to hear your opinion is through those discussion board posts. I look forward to hearing what you have to say, what you think about all of the things that we're talking about in class, but the exam and assessment is not the place to give me that information. The third thing that I don't need to see on an essay question is a lot of information that you learned or gleaned from another course or another book. Um, you would want to give me information and examples from your reading, from your notes, from the PowerPoints, because I am looking to see whether or not you understand the material in this course. And any time that you give me extra information, that's fine, as long as you have already given me examples and information from our material. All right, finally, the what I am looking for in an essay question. There are really two, three things that I want you to do, really no matter how the question is worded, I'm looking for you to answer three questions. One, I want you to tell me what was the problem? What was the problem uh, that the institution or the person that is mentioned in the essay question, what, were, what was the problem that they had to deal with? The second thing that I want you to do is tell me how the people or the institution addressed the problem. What did they do? And you would want to give me examples. They did this. There were problems with the Articles of Confederation. 
and they address the problem by meeting for a convention and at the convention they talked about looking at the Articles of Confederation and revising them they looked at throwing them out and then you would finally give me an evaluation of how that solution worked the solution that they came up with what were the implications if it we're talking about the Constitutional Convention and they were talking about the three-fifths compromise that would mean that with the three-fifths compromise that southern states were going to have more representatives that would mean that southern politicians would be more likely to be presidents in fact we had several presidents that were slave owners because of the, the that was one of the implications of the three-fifths compromise at the constitutional convention so those would be some examples um, you would cer certainly want to make sure that it is nice and clear that if you give me any words or definitions that come from the book you would want to explain what that meant so that I know that you really understand it and that would help you get the maximum amount of points on an essay question on the exam I hope this is helpful this is the first time I've done this so let me know talk to you later